Today we're going to compare the two major broadband technologies that can supply you with ultra-fast fibre and talk about what you can do if you can't get these services. We're going to look at what technology is best for gaming performance and outright speed and hopefully explain that you don't need that super expensive, super fast broadband package to have a really good experience online. There's only really two major technologies in the UK that can truly supply you with ultra-fast broadband. The first is called Full Fiber, and it's basically a fiber cable that goes from the exchange directly to your property. The cable can do multiple gigs no problem and all that needs upgrading to go faster in the future is basically the equipment it's connected to like the optical network terminal inside your building or the equipment on the other end. It's made of reinforced Kevlar and literally hangs from a pole to my building and you might be able to see it above my head right now. Now currently the fastest provider in the UK through full fibre is EE. They offer 1.6 gigabits per second. However, when I tried to order the service, I was told that I couldn't have it even though I have FTTP at this address. There's also other fibre providers like City Fibre and Hyperoptic, but they use the same tech as OpenReach, so we'll be sticking to OpenReach for this video. Doxis, otherwise known as cable broadband, is delivered via Virgin Media and uses a coax cable to deliver its speeds. The technology behind it, currently Doxis 3.1, can deliver speeds up to 10 gig per second. However, Virgin currently only offer a one gig service. We've got the 800 meg service to test here. Now, that just leaves the rest of you. And you'll be at the mercy of this, the old school phone line. Now in the UK, we call this FTTC, fiber to the cabinet. If you're lucky, fiber will go to the cabinet in the street, the green one, and then take the phone line the rest of the way to your property. Your speeds will depend on the length and quality of that phone line run, and these can go up to 80 meg per second, which really isn't too bad if it's well managed internally. Even if you can't get super fast full fibre to your house, there's numerous other ways you can get broadband, like WISPs or even through 4G or 5G. I'll talk more about this later, but I can put this on my desk, plug it into power and get 500 meg through 5G, which is unreal. Now let's compare fibre to the property versus Doxis. <laughs> Now first, I want to talk about ping. Ping, 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 she's done. Or the responsiveness of internet. Don't worry, we'll get on to speed a little bit later because that's what all of these companies try to sell you. But the ping or the responsiveness is gonna be the decider on whether you have a good online experience or not. Now there's two types of ping that I'm gonna be referencing in the video, loaded ping and unloaded ping. These graphs you can see are from the last 24 hours of numerous connections that I've got deployed and managed personally. And if you look at the FTTP, it's very stable with little fluctuation. One thing to mention, the difference between the ping in London and East Midlands is oddly different, but the consistency is key when doing things like online gaming. A flat line is what we want. Compare this to, for example, a connection from SpaceX's Starlink. You can see that this graph is completely all over the place. I certainly know what connection I would prefer if I had the option. But if you've got Starlink, you probably don't have any other options. Now let's compare BT's FTTP to Virgin's cable or Doxis service. This is where it gets interesting. Both of these services are delivering the same speeds to my house, yet the variation in ping is night and day. As mentioned, we're using the coax cable in the street to deliver these speeds, and these are exactly the result of these fluctuating ping times. Unlike the fiber run, the Doxis cable is subject to interference. Now the fun fact is, even though the cable ping and the FTTP ping look completely different, both of these are absolutely fine for gaming. But what we're talking about here is unloaded ping. I'm currently in a game of Apex right now on the Virgin cable connection and we're getting around 50 milliseconds ping. However, if I completely saturate the connection by running two separate speed tests here, you'll be able to see that the ping in Apex is going to almost double. Like it is now unplayable. 
So now I've switched over to the fiber connection, the FTTP, and we're gonna do exactly the same. As you can notice though, the unloaded ping is very low, which is nice, around 20 milliseconds. If I redo both of these tests though, and go back into the game, as you can see, we are having the same problem, but it is nowhere near as bad than it was on the Virgin side of things. We're not even going over 100 here, where with the Virgin, I was seeing almost 250 to 300, at points. With the nature of fibre being light in a tube, there really isn't much to go wrong. That being, there's nothing really to interfere with it. Now, if we redo these tests, but let's say instead of saturating the whole line, we only do a download at 200 meg a second, you can see here via the graphs that the ping isn't really changed. I mean, it is a little bit, but we can still online game here if we don't completely saturate our line. The reason the bigger broadband packages seem to provide a better online Online experience is simply because it's harder to fully saturate a 1.6 gig link for example compared to a hundred meg. Now let's talk raw speed but before we do a quick word from today's sponsor Squarespace. If you are after a really low latency way to make a website then use Squarespace because they've got thousands of professionally designed templates. You basically look through, choose one that you like, and then you can alter it and change it, upload your own designs, images, text, pictures. They've also got really cool things on there like SEO. So you can see how your website's gonna appear on search engines like Google. They've also got e-commerce, so you can sell things on your Squarespace website, whether it's physical product or digital product, which is actually bonkers. You can make your own shop. If this does sound interesting to you, please use our code TECHFLOW for 10% off your first Squarespace purchase or domain. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Okay, so now it's time to talk about raw speed. What all of these companies actually try to sell you. I stayed up to midnight last night running numerous speed tests on my broadband to show you my findings today. We'll start out with the Virgin service using cable. Now they actually over delivered. I've got an 800 meg package here and over a couple of speed tests, I was getting on average around 880. That is 80 meg over what I'm actually paying, which is nice to see. That came with an upload speed of around 85 meg and then that ping unloaded looking like 20. Moving over to the FTTP, this is a 900 meb package. Again, they are overshooting the mark here. We're getting around 940 meg. So an extra 40 meg above, which is nice to have, obviously. Where the FTTP shines over the Virgin again, though, is in the upload speed. As you can see, we've got around 80 on Virgin and about 110 on the FTTP. Again, another check mark for FTTP is the unloaded ping. We're looking more like eight on the FTTP, which is less than half of the Virgin's ping, which is really, really interesting. Now this is where we'll start to deviate a little bit because a speed test only tells half the story. I did some 10 gig downloads from both Google Drive and Dropbox respectively. I found that using the Virgin connection, it took one minute and 33 seconds to download around a 10 gigabyte video file from the server. Over on the FTTP, this took one minute and 25 seconds. Now, obviously this goes without saying on both services to download 10 gig in under one and a half minutes is absolutely phenomenal. But this is where things started to get a little bit interesting. I tried the exact same file download, but this time instead of from Drive, from Dropbox. Now, same internet connections, nothing's changed. Through Dropbox on Virgin, it took four minutes and 54 seconds. And on BT, it took five minutes and four seconds. So it was actually slower on Dropbox on the faster internet provider. If your internet at home supports a thousand meg, that doesn't mean to say that the server that you're connecting to, i.e. Dropbox in this instance, is going to also support those speeds. I've always said to people that 50 or 60 meg will pretty much do any household absolutely fine. With 60 meg, you could have four 4K streams from Netflix running simultaneously with just 60 meg. 
Now, another thing that I thought would be really interesting to test would be the built-in speed tests on both PlayStation and Xbox. So I'll throw some graphs your guys' way now. Interestingly enough, the Virgin seems to be the fastest connection for gaming, giving us 575 download on the PlayStation and 1017 download on the Xbox. Now, if we switch over to the BT connection on the PlayStation, we got 373, and on the Xbox, we got 858. So it seems to be that out of both the consoles, the Xbox is the faster console, but out of BT and Virgin, Virgin gives a faster download for game servers, which I think is interesting. But the aim of my video today is to hopefully demonstrate to you that having these massive broadband connections can be good, they're not necessarily necessary, and I think people need to alter the way that they look at their broadband, not just looking at the raw speed, but more now the responsiveness of that broadband line, because that is what is going to give you a good experience online. Now, if you are in the unfortunate position where you can't get any sort of fiber, whether it's Doxis cable or fiber to the property, there are some cool ways that you can get super fast broadband to your place. One of them is by using 4G or 5G. Now, as you've seen with the ping results, you're definitely not going to have a nice time online gaming. But if you're not after a responsive online experience and you're just generally browsing the web or want to do some large file downloads, I have had some absolutely incredible speeds out of a 5G package from 3, and this costs me £22 a month. It's actually my cheapest broadband package out of all of the ones that I've tested today. Now, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, though. The 5G device often loses its 5G signal, and to get it back, I have to reboot it. Again, the same thing is going to happen with something like Starlink, although I think Starlink is absolutely fantastic for people that don't have any other option. That is all it's for. If you have the option to have a fiber line installed at your house, or even a WISP for that matter, or even use 5G, that could give you a far better experience than what you would get through Starlink. And Starlink really is for last mile connectivity. I wouldn't even be putting it on your list of things to consider if you have fiber. Latency is just as important, if not more important than the actual physical download speed itself, depending on what you're trying to do online. And that your ping can massively fluctuate when your line is under significant load. I'm going to be doing some videos over the next few weeks about what to do to mitigate high ping times. But for now, I think that's enough information for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed and learned a little bit more about how broadband works. My name's been Alex for Techflow, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.